Let's talk about the components that contribute to acute inflammation. The changes seen in inflammation in cells are known as cellular changes, while changes seen in the blood vessels are called vascular changes. Let's start by talking about vascular events. First, there's vasoconstriction. This event is the earliest change which is transient in nature. This is what's responsible for blanching or skin turning pale. As the immediate response to injury or insult, the blood vessels rapidly and transiently constrict and then dilate. Next, there's vasodilation. Vasodilation caused by nitrous oxide and notably histamine. Alterations in the vascular caliber leads to increased blood flow, characterized by redness and warmth. Vasodilation first involves the arterioles and then leads to the opening of new capillary beds. Lastly, there's increased vascular permeability. This is the hallmark of acute inflammation. It mostly affects venules and occurs due to the formation of endothelial gaps. This leads to the formation of a protein-rich fluid known as exudate. An exudate is an edema fluid with a high protein concentration and a specific gravity of greater than 1.015 which frequently contains inflammatory cells. The retraction of endothelial cells is the most common mechanism of vascular permeability and is known as the immediate transient response. It also results in endothelial injury in arterioles, capillaries, and venules create an immediate sustained response. Remember, anatomically small vessels are involved in inflammation, such as venules. This involves the emigration of leukocytes with the accumulation and activation at the site of the injury. This phenomenon also involves plasma-derived inflammatory mediator sources, such as complement system activation giving rise to C3A and C5A mediators, and Hageman factors activating the clotting system, which gives rise to fibrin split products, and the kilocrayon kinin system giving rise to kinins, such as bradykinin. There are also cell-derived inflammatory mediator sources, such as mast cell or basophil degranulation giving rise to histamine, platelets producing serotonin, inflammatory cells like platelet-activating factor, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes, and endothelium producing nitric oxide, platelet-activating factor, and prostaglandins. The immediate transient response due to the retraction of the endothelial cells is caused by histamine and the contraction of the endothelial cell cytoskeleton and affects the venules. The immediate sustained response due to direct endothelial injury is caused by direct injury causing necrosis and detachment of endothelial cells causing a change in the arterioles capillaries, and venules, a delayed prolonged response occurs due to thermal and radiation injury, inducing endothelial cell damage and affecting the capillaries and venules. Leukocyte-mediated endothelial cell injury occurs when leukocytes are activated and cause endothelial cell injuries most commonly affecting the venules but may also affect pulmonary and glomerular capillaries. Increased transcytosis is caused by histamine and VEGF and affects the venules. Leakage from new blood vessels, most commonly caused by VEGF and histamine, affects the site of angiogenesis. The last vascular change we'll talk about is called stasis. The loss of fluid is responsible for the concentration of red cells in small vessels. Due to this increased viscosity, there will be slower blood flow. This phenomenon is what's known as stasis. Therefore, inflammation is associated with increased chances of clot formation. As stasis develops, blood leukocytes, principally neutrophils, accumulate along the vascular endothelium. At the same time, endothelial cells are activated by mediators 
produced at sites of infection and tissue damage, and express increased levels of adhesion molecules.